Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in, coming back and watching. I appreciate it. Hope you're doing well, staying safe, taking care of yourself, all those kind of things. And if you're new here, my name's Jim. Great to meet you. Thanks for stopping by. I make tutorial videos here every week showing you how I edit my photos using different software products. Today, I'm in Luminar 4 and I've got a video that was taken in London in a place called Covent Garden and it was at night and it was kind of dark and all that. So this is a quick fix video, some tips on how to brighten a dark interior quick easy a few things that you can do to really enhance the photo let me show you the shot here it is as i said dark kind of drab and there it is after i'm done it's just a couple of minutes a few key things let me hit reset and we'll get going okay here we are unedited photo and this is a jpeg although i shot raw at the time i just use a, a jpeg for this video when i have a scene that's this dark the first thing i'll often do is actually go to ai enhance and i'll just take that ai accent up and i'll just bring it up in this case i'm going to about 40. Um, and the reason why is just because it's so dark and this does a good job of kind of setting the scene the only thing is you got to be a little bit careful because ai accent also impacts other things in the photo it does some contrast things like that so just be a little bit careful about how much you use it but for me it's a great way to start out because it gives you a bit more visibility into the scene and now that it's kind of brighter everywhere i can get a better idea about what i want to do the different thing you could do of course is go in here and lift exposure except that brightens everything equally whereas ai enhance seems to be a bit more selective so i like to do that first but now that I've got a little bit brighter, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to take the temperature down because I like a little bit cooler temps for these kind of interiors. And I also want to take the tint up, something about like that. I'm just trying to get the tones right and the colors um, just a little bit more to my liking. I do want to add some smart contrast, which as you can tell by adding contrast, it is accentuating some of the dark areas. So you got to be a little bit careful there and not overdo it. I'm going to bring the highlights up and I'm also going to bring the shadows up and bringing the shadows up, of course, will help lighten some of the photo. So there we go. So far, we've gone from that to that with two tools. I'm going to keep going. Um, it's not quite bright enough, but that's OK. I've got more to do for interiors like this. I like to apply AI structure. In this case, I'm going fairly heavy. I'm going to 54. And as you can see, let me turn that off. There's before, you can see it's it's less crunchy is the word I like to use for AI structure. It gives a little bit of detail, a little bit of pop, but it also gives a little bit of contrast because there's the before and there's the after. You can see it, it punches up the light just a little bit. So keep that in mind. That's going to help you also brighten that interior. Okay, while I'm at it, I'm going to go to details enhancer and I'm going to just go a little bit on um, basically a, a bunch of these and I'm going to go to about 25 here and sharpen. And this was just through experimentation, but what I wanted to do because it's all basically a detailed, very kind of busy scene, I wanted to go ahead and bring up the small, the medium details, and add a little bit of sharpen. Uh, now that I'm there, I want to bring back some of the warmer tones in that left wall and that area down below where that little pub is, uh, Punch and Judy, which, by the way, reminds me of a song from one of my favorite bands, an obscure Scottish progressive rock band called Marillion. Love that band. They just, their songs are like poems. Absolutely just awesome. Anyway, old, old school stuff, but they had a song called Punch and Judy, so I had to go in there and have a beer when I was there, of course. Um, Golden Hour, I'm going to bring that up about 25, 26, something about like that. And that's going to pop those warmer tones. Let me turn that off and show you. There's before and there's after. It's subtle, but I like that line going that way, kind of airing uh, or aiming towards that, that deep uh, wall at the very end of this um, uh, cavernous room. I don't know what you call it. Uh, but anyway, it adds a little bit more brightness and I think it leads the eye that way. And then of course that cluster of people is down there kind of waiting for you to kind of, I kind of go left and kind of go that way through the photo. So now that I've done that, I'm going to pop over to the pro tab and adjustable gradient is absolutely the perfect tool for this kind of thing. So you can set orientation. I'm actually going to maybe move this up just a tiny bit, but other than that, I'm leaving the gradient zone the way it is. And I'm just, kind of cool with it like that. So um, here's where you have all this power. I'm going to take the exposure up in the top. And this is one of the reasons I like adjustable gradient so much. It just has so much power and it allows you to separate top from bottom. Keep in mind when I set that gradient zone, I could also tilt it, rotate it if I need to make it kind of on a slant or a slope. But in this case, it's perfect to go straight across. And I'm going to add a little bit of contrast as well. Um, and really for me, adding contrast and then increasing uh, the exposure 
It's kind of a delicate dance. As you add contrast, it kind of darkens things, so you might go back and bump up the exposure again to brighten them a little bit. So let me turn this off and show you the before. Again, just look at the top half of the photo, basically the roof, uh, or the center of the photo, uh, but mostly the roof is what I'm looking at. There it is before, and there it is after. You can see it's got a nice little bit of uh, punch. I think it looks a whole lot better. Now I'm gonna go to the bottom, and here I'm also gonna bump the exposure. I wanna brighten that bottom a little bit. That stone's getting a little bit dark, so I'm adding that, and then also adding a little bit of contrast. I like to add contrast, but again, delicate dance. You gotta be careful. Adding contrast darkens the dark parts, uh, and brightens the bright parts, it's creating contrast. So it is basically increasing the difference between the dark and the bright. That's what contrast is doing. Uh, and so in this case, I'm also going to take the shadows up, and I'm going to do that pretty significantly. Um, and I'm going to go about 50, 51 there. So let me turn this off, and you can see the before and the after. There you go. I think it looks a lot better. And there we go. Now, the last thing I'm going to do is dodge and burn. And I love dodge and burn. I don't feel like I use it enough in my videos, but it's a fantastic thing. So I want to do two things. Um, number one is this sign up here has just gotten too bright for me. So I'm going to hit darken and strength at 25, I think is perfect. So what I want to do, I'm going to increase uh, my, um, uh, my brush and I'm just going to paint a little bit more darkness into this sign using the dodge and burn tool. And that's because the truth is uh, that sign is there and while I could try to get rid of it with clone and stamp and stuff, I feel like that's a whole lot of work. Uh, all I really want to do is darken it so as not to draw your attention to it. So the truth is I might should probably go more than 25. I'm going to try 35 and just darken this a little bit. I don't want to totally remove it, but I just kind of want to remove um, it from, a, from being a distraction, I guess, visually. So something about like that I recommend when you're doing dodge and burn. Take your time, experiment with the different strengths, and zoom in if you have uh, specific areas that you're doing that are kind of small. But let me show you the before. You can see that sign is a whole lot brighter and after. Now, I'm gonna turn it back on because I'm not done. And the other thing I wanna do is I'm gonna get lighten, and I'm at about 20%, and all I wanna do is brighten this stonework a little bit. I don't wanna do a lot, but the way I look at this scene, um, of course, this, this, uh, this video is about brightening some of the darker areas. And you can see I'm kind of haphazardly wiping my mouse around and, and brightening that area. But it's because I see those lights across the ceiling. And to me, they should be casting more light down on the floor. And that's what I'm trying to accentuate by lightening that with Dodge and Burn. So let me show you. Turn that off. Look at that sign, which has gotten darker. And look at the floor, which has gotten lighter. And there you go. Darker sign, lighter floor. That's what I would do. Now, the last thing you could do is go back over here and maybe increase some more shadows in the light tool or increase AI Enhance if you want a little bit more. I don't want to make it completely bright. I just wanted to brighten it enough that it's not a dark kind of drab interior. I wanted to show you kind of a quick fix for brightening up uh, an interior, giving you some ideas. But depending on the interior, because this was shot at night, I don't want it to be like... Uh, completely bright like a daytime shot. I wanted to keep some darkness about it. But there it is before and there it is after. And that's my quick fix for a, a dark kind of drab interior and a couple of ways to really make that photo pop. Hope you found this helpful, my friends. Thank you very much for watching. I'll be back really soon with more videos, of course. Take care of yourselves out there. I'll see you soon and adios.